Um, all right, so today uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about this project. Um, the the main title is where the wild things are it's a geocaching event um and i'll talk a little bit more about what geocaching is and how to find caches in a little bit um, this particular geocaching event is going to last through the sum through the spring um, until june 21st so in all actuality the caches will stay out in the in their locations, but the game that the library is presenting about today, um, which does have a little reward component at the end, will will finalize uh, around June 21st. So, John, you can go to the next slide. And so, essentially, it's a scavenger hunt around town. I'm saying caterpillar cafes and butterfly buffets, and we'll talk later about why I'm using those words, the concept of the project. Um, we're planning to launch it April 19th. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to launch it by April 19th. We're moving right along. We still have some things to put in place this week, but those should be finalized by Saturday. Um, so go ahead, John. So I want to talk a little bit about the background of the project. And I just, I'm going to start with this picture just to bring my where I was when the project kind of started percolating around me. Um, for the you, as we all know, we've all spent a lot of time on Zoom and computers and television and all kinds of things. I have two children that have been home with me doing distance learning since March 13th of 2020. They went back to school for two days this week, the very yesterday. So some of these things may look familiar in your house. Maybe they don't if you have a screen free house, but um, I don't. And um, some of these things um, are certainly things that have come up. We love to watch movies, but we also get a lot of frustration with our computers and our iPads. And also if you'll see the little picture up there um, with the mom holding the iPad. I don't know about most of you, but my children um, got, were getting in the habit of asking for screen time a lot. And it just was, you know, and then myself, um, I've been doing virtual story times for the library since I came, since we all came back to work last summer in July, um, live Zoom stories, all of my meetings are on Zoom. Most everything that I do, um, besides what I'm doing in the library, um, is on the computer. So I was starting to feel burnout as well. Um, so at the time I start, I got an email from Greta Messick, the librarian at HES about saving the monarch and I got excited. I want to help. And so then I started hearing information about Jay's uh, pollinator group that he was kind of getting off the ground and Greta uh, made some connections. So I just started joining the pollinator group learned about this concept that Jay Beckwith was talking about, which was a geocaching. So given that I, if you want to go to the next slide, I wanted to figure out how to get from this to this with the kids. So, um, you know, the geocaching, when Jay had mentioned this concept, I had just started geocaching with my son. It had been something that a couple years ago I kind of learned about, but just really hadn't done it yet. We found, we had found our first one and then, and lately we've been doing quite a bit of geocaching. So how can we, you know, as we move forward into the spring and the summer, um, things are starting to open back up. We do still have restrictions. Children are, some children are going back to school, some children are not. Um, who knows what our, the next couple of months may be like, they may be a little up and down. So I started thinking, how can we come up, with, how can I make this a fun activity for families that they can do pass together? That doesn't um, need, you know, a guide, it doesn't need somebody giving them instructions, all of, so uh, the geocaching just fell right into place with that. Now, I don't know if everybody here knows what geocaching is, so we will, I'll show like a very quick little video, but let's see what's on the next slide, John, I believe. So this is, goes back to the pollinator group. So why caterpillars and butterflies? Why, what is the geocaching and how does it relate to the caterpillars and butterflies? And I will tell you um, about what, how it relates to the geocache in a moment, 
but the background is we just want to increase the knowledge of the caterpillar, the butterfly, but really of their the plants that they eat, um, the plants that and the flowers that they need the butterflies need. So we wanted it all started with the milkweed and the monarch, but it grew into this bigger project. Um, so now I am not a pollinator expert. I'm not a butterfly a caterpillar expert, and I'm definitely not a geocaching expert. However, I was able to talk to some people in that no, have a lot more knowledge. One of them being Vicki Dree, who is here on the call with me. She, um, I gave her my idea and she helped me identify some locations in town where I would be able to find host larval plants for caterpillars. And um, so then I, I took her information and I also spoke with Nancy Glazer, who is my coworker, who is a butterfly expert as well. And so I took the information from them, started learning about the geocache, and then set off to create this game. And I'll tell you what the game is now. Um, do you want to go to the next slide, John? Okay, so it's a geocaching game. There are 11 locations in town. Um, and each location highlights a different plant or tree that a caterpillar would be eating from, um, lay, or a butterfly would lay the eggs, or the caterpillar would eat. And um, so each geocache is placed near a unique plant or tree. So there's 11 different plants or trees highlighted. Actually, there's nine because there's two things that are highlighted that are a little bit different. One is about highlighting um, water and the fact that butterflies and, and bees need to have water. And also we'll have one, of course, that highlights the library because you can come here, find research, books, materials. And um, so those will be, there are 11 locations in town. Uh, several of them are in city parks and some are not, and the other half are not. So um, Anyways, let's move on and just I'll tell you what the geocaching, I'll have to see the geocaching video for a moment to answer any questions about what is geocaching. And then we can, you know, if you have any questions after this video, we can chat about that. All right, so the little video is just the, the first video is what is a geocache? And you saw the geocache that was in their video was really big. Ours that we're using are small. They're like about three by five or so like that. Um, and has a little, these are the official geocache. This is one of the official ones from the website from geocaching.com. However, hiding geocaches, you do not have to buy the official caches. I really wanted something that was good and waterproof and also because of time constraints, I didn't want to have to make them on my own. Um, but I've seen everything from a medicine bottle to like a very tiny little magnetic um, little little circular thing that you just, you know, uh, twist off the top and inside there would be a log. So most of the time with a geocache, you're going to have a log that's inside of some sort. And this one is just like a little book. And so whenever you find the geocache, then you sign it. Now, also with geocaching, a lot of times it'll have little treats or knickknacks, just little treasures that you can trade. And um, maybe they use the word swag. I can't remember exactly the, the wording that goes with it. Um, and so sometimes geocachers, they'll have little things, they'll take, take out something that they want to trade and they'll, and they'll take things. I've learned there are many different types of things that you could find in a geocache, like trackables. And so um, for this one, what's going to be inside is there will be a sticker. And um, that will go with the game. And so each of the 11 geocaches are going to have a sticker in them. So when the children find the families find the sticker they're going to put them on a passport and i'll show you the passport in a moment so i just wanted to show you what the geocaches look like now when it's out in the wild it's probably not going to look like this because someone might be able to spot that in nature and say that doesn't belong there it's a plastic little box so some of our geocaches for this game will be camouflaged so it makes it more challenging to find the geocache. 
So before we go on, let's go ahead and watch this video for finding the geocache, and then we'll talk a little bit more. Okay. So that shows you a little bit, just like the basics of what you're gonna do when you find um, the cache, um, download the app and then start searching. So our caches that are gonna be hidden in town um, are going to be tagged because there's a lot of other caches in Healdsburg. Um, they're gonna be tagged. You can go to the next slide, John. They're gonna be tagged. Um, it, on the geocaching website where where, I, where we log them with um, where the wild things are. Uh, I It's a possibility that I have to shorten that and I'm just gonna do WTW um, or WTWTA number one. So it'll either be where the wild things are number one or the, or I think I'm going to do the whole thing. I was playing around with trying to name each of the caches with some kind of clue. When you're out caching, a lot of times the name of the cache will give you a clue as to where it is. For example, there's one in Windsor called it's a stinky situation. And it's a little magnet nano cache, and it's at the bottom of a trash can in one of the parks. That took us a long time to find, but eventually with your hand down under the trash can, we found it because we knew it's a sneaky, stick, sneaky, <laughs> it's a stinky situation. I can barely say that. So um, because we haven't logged the caches into until this Friday and Saturday, I just don't have the specific names but you're either gonna look for where the wild things are or the initials. So that'll show you. And there's get, there, they'll be numbered one through 11 as well. Um, that way you'll know. The 11th one is a bonus one. It's kind of tricky. The, the spot of getting to it is it, the terrain is kind of hard. So that one's gonna be a bonus. And you'll see here in front of you, this is the, this is the inside of the passport. So now you see this little passport and then it's got the information from the flyer and everything on the front. And then you open it up. It has the simple, everything that you see there is what you'll see. And so the families will take this around and there's 11 caches. And the idea is that you wanna find at least 10 of them. And in each cache will be a different sticker that will match the butterfly that we're learning about um, that come that you will find their caterpillar and where they possibly might leave, um, leave their eggs. So it's a way to get families outside. It's a way to help us learn more about the plants and flowers that are surrounding us and also learn more about the butterfly cycle and just kind of get kids out into nature. Um, the, the prize for completing all 10 will be um, a book and which will be per the Friends of the Healdsburg Library will be giving us funds so that we can purchase books, but they will all be um, sci science or nature related and what different ones for the different age groups. Because essentially families with you know younger children can do this and teenagers could do it on their own and adults can do it. I find it super fun um, to go geocaching. So, so that's kind of the way the game is gonna work. Like, and if you wanna to go to the next slide, John, I'll show you, this shows you that inside the Western tiger swallowtail graphic that is hidden near an arroyo willow tree in town, this is what will be inside the cache. So it'll be laminated and folded. So when they take off the lid, this will open and you'll be able to read that and just learn a little bit of information. I'm taking that, which we're creating an end of, a unique one for each cache, and then I'm making a little Instagram post for the SEL Kids Read page, just uh, for, you know, it's Earth Day coming up. So every Friday, there'll just be a little post about another butterfly. Um, so inside the cache, you'll have this information and then the sticker for the passport and then also the log book. All right, we're on to the next slide, I believe. So here, I just wanted to mention all the different people who have been helping me. I mentioned Vicki Dree, who's, I did not put on the flyer, Vicki, um, but the 
um, the two groups, I also talked about Greta and also Nancy Glazer, but the groups that are kind of helping me put the game out are um, the Girl Scouts of Northern California, Troop 10176. I have three girls that are here, Sammy, Claire, and Hannah, and they're all working on their bronze award. So what they've been doing is they have gone out and hunted some of the locations, identified the plants, and have you know created a little document that shows their location, what they found, and some information. They're also helping to create the stickers that go inside the caches. They're designing them. They're going to be just little tiny, you know, like Avery sticker, one inch circles. And then um, they are also helping with some of the camouflaging and the hiding. So they've been doing a lot of work. And then the girls will maintain the caches to be sure that the stickers stay plentiful in, in the caches. So it's been awesome to work with them and have them work with me because it's been such a huge help. I, I, the project has kind of taken on a life of its own. It's grown and it's it, there's a lot of little details. The other group is the Rotary Club of Healdsburg Sunrise because I got involved with this because their organization is kicking off some plans for environmental education and um, climate change. And they've really taken on this pollinator. Um, they want to work on the wayfinding stations for the, the monarchs and really just getting people interested. Um, and then the Friends of the Hillsburg Library too will be providing the books for the prizes. So we've really just kind of working out. And really, since we're using some of the city parks, I should probably put the city logo on here as well. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh, does, before I talk about the Earth Day kits, does, um, Allie had a question in the chat and she said, where do we pick up the passports? That's really important. You can pick them up at the library. So starting on April 19th, you can stop by the library and you can pick up your cash or your passport. I will probably just have a little thing out on the table um, so people can come and just grab one, um, but we'll have to chat about that. And um, are there any other questions specifically about the game or geocaching? Okay. Well, I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be super fun. I look forward to um, doing it, you know, with my kids. I'm not going to be able to give them all the hints, but um, I'd really love for you to share the information. Sometimes right now it's kind of hard for us to get information to the community, um, given that we're only doing curbside at the library at the moment. Um, also, everyone is very busy going back to school and doing different things. Um, so if you know people that would be interested in playing this game, please share and just mention, just to stop down at the library to pick up the passport. The other thing I wanted to talk about is our Earth Day kits. So I did a kit um, for the Great Backyard Bird Count in February. We made 50 kits and they were gone within three days. We had so much fun with that program. I had so much fun making it and doing it. And so it really kind of spawned me to want to keep doing these kits. So I knew I wanted to do an Earth Day kit. And this kind of shows you a little bit about what the kids will get. They'll get a little, um, I don't, are you able to, I don't see myself, so I can't see what you're seeing, but you'll be able to get this little nature journal, which they have little pockets. You can go out and you can, you know, find things out in nature. You can glue on here, decorate it. So it's a little paper bag nature journal um, in the little booklet that will come in the Earth Day kit. I'll be talking a little bit about nature journaling and sit spots. That's just going and finding a sit spot out in nature, the same one every single day. And you go there and you watch things change in front of your eyes and you can journal about them or draw. So that's in here. Um, the seeds will all be seeds that I save from my family and I save, not just me and my friend Kim, really. Um, on our property, we saved tons of seeds last year. Um, and so in this kit, we'll be doing calendula, calendula flowers, zinnias, and sunflowers. And those are all uh, flowers that are great flowers for butterflies and bees and birds. The sunflowers love this, uh, the birds love the sunflower seeds. So um, we have this 
little handout or a little card. It's called Be a Friend of Pollinators that I was able to get from Dr. Jean Knapp, which is another person I met out of the pollinator group. She came and brought me those. There will also be a free milkweed coupon in the Earth Day kit, and that's coming from the Windsor Garden Club. Um, I met a woman named Cindy Fenton through the pollinator group. And so on April 24th at the Windsor Garden Club, you can take your free milkweed coupon and you'll get one free milkweed. I, they might have more for sale, I'm not sure. Um, because I'll be talking in the little booklet as well about um, the, the Monarch way stations and planting the milkweed and the flowers and creating a nice little habitat um, to support the entire butterfly cycle of the monarch because we know that the monarch is in very much danger and that's how this all kicked off for me was the email from Greta like we need to save the monarch okay so here we are and um, then they'll have two biodegradable seed pots and I think that's it so yeah and there'll be a book list and thing in the little kit and information about creating your own way station. So I'm making 50 of these kits. I expect that they will go pretty fast, but they will be ready on April 19th to be handed out. And then thank you to the Healdsburg Rotary. They would they are working on some kits of their own. And I do believe that the library will be a distribution site for their garden kits. Um, and we'll probably be giving away about 50 of theirs as well. So um, look for that Earth Day week. And um, so that's coming. So that's, I'm really excited about putting together this kit. And then I'm hoping to do another kit in June for pollinator week, but we should probably get this one going first. <laughs> and then the very last thing I wanted to talk about today was a couple story walks that are coming up that we're walking, working with the city of Healdsburg. Um, I do believe that now I know that the June story walk will be taking place at the Badger Park in Healdsburg. And I don't know if you know what a story walk is, but it basically takes a book and, you know, you divide it out. There's about 17 different panels. It has the actual pages from the book or the graphics from the pages. And then there's activities that go with each of the seven, 17 slides. So um, you read the story and then the, you know, the kids could be flying or doing some kind of, you know, looking for something in nature. Um, this story is about the river. And so it's perfect for Badger. And then in July, we're going to do um, Hello Little One, which is a monarch butterfly story. And um, this one I believe will be at Gibbs Park. And so um, once again, it'll have the 17 panels and I'm really, this is a beautiful book. I'm super excited about having that one out. So that is just some exciting things that the library has coming up. Um, you know, as we've been kind of in the library sequestered by ourselves for, you know, quite some time and, and we are, you know, moving towards reopening soon. Um, I just really wanted to be able to connect with the community in some way that was in nature and had to do with books. And I'm really excited about being able to make this happen. Um, and then I think that's all I have for the presentation. If there's anybody that has any quest questions about any of it, please feel free to ask. And I know most of you on this call know how to find me <laughs> at the library. So. And I think that's it. All right. Let's see if there's, thank you, Allie. Okay. Oh, yeah. And Danelle says that they might be willing to put the event in their newsletter. Yeah, that would be perfect. I will, I'll write to them. I'll write to the office. All right. Oh, and yeah, the Girl Scouts, I don't know, now I can see them, but if you guys wanna say hello or say anything, you feel free. If you don't wanna say anything, you also don't have to do that. <laughs> I think they're all gonna pretty much stay muted, but yeah. I, I will speak on their behalf if that's thank okay. Thank you, Janelle, yes. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for allowing us to be involved with this project. I think it was, it 
came at the perfect time for these three girls. We, we do have more in our troop, um, but these three are eligible for the bronze award. And that is the highest award that a Girl Scout junior can earn. Oh. And so these girls will need to spend 20 hours on this project. And at that point, I will submit their project to the Girl Scouts of Northern California, and they will be awarded their bronze award. And so not oh. only was it a perfect time to get them started on it, it was also a perfect a project to work on in the community and do something good for our community at the same time. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for contacting me, Danelle. It's been great. All right, then. Oh, I did want to say one last thing that the Rotary um, gave us, purchased the geocaches for us. So, and the soil for the Earth Day kit. So we're really thankful to all of the people that have been supporting the project. It's been nice to connect with community members after not really being able to do so for quite some time. All right. Well, I think we can say goodbye and I'll see you all soon. All right.